This is the first video of the fluorescent and bioluminescent fusion proteins for neuroscience lecture. The objectives of this lecture are to understand the types of engineered fluorescent proteins and understand applications of fluorescent fusion proteins and how to discuss specific uses in neuroscience. In this particular video, we will focus on how to create fusion proteins using recombinant DNA technology. For recombinant DNA technology, there are four important elements that we will need. The first element is the use of restriction enzymes to cut DNA molecules. The second element are DNA ligases to glue DNA molecules together. The third element are plasmids or expression vectors to transfer DNA molecules. And the fourth element is cloning to express the DNA molecules that we insert in this expression plasmid vectors. The first element in the DNA recombinant technology is the restriction enzyme, which are enzymes that cut DNA at a specific recognition nucleotide sequences known as restriction sites. And the major source of these restriction enzymes are bacteria. There are more than 3,000 available restriction enzymes in the market, giving you a large um, a variety of restriction enzymes to use in your cloning experiments. Each of these enzymes recognizes a unique uh, recognition site that varies between four and eight nucleotides. And there are two major groups of restriction enzymes. There are ones that are called sticky ends restriction enzymes because of the way they cut the DNA, they leave these overhanging extremes that overlap together and they are easy to um, stick together and re-ligate. So that's why they receive the name of sticky ends. There, are not, there is another group of enzymes that are called blunt ends because of the way they cut the DNA straight and they leave two equal fragments on each side. So um, you can use either sticky or blunt ends, but I recommend you to use sticky ends whenever using cloning uh, for cloning purposes because they're easier to work with. The second element is the DNA ligation. So once the DNA is cut, you will need to glue it back by the using DNA ligases, which are enzymes that join DNA strands together by catalyzing the formation of a phosphodiester bond. Ligases play a key role in repairing single strand breaks in duplex DNA in living organisms, and some forms of ligases may also repair double strand breaks. These enzymes are commonly used in recombinant DNA experiments and are required to glue different DNA molecules that will be then amplified by PCR or um, cut by restriction enzymes. Then the third element are the expression vectors or plasmids. Plasmids are circular double-strand DNA molecules that can be propagated in bacteria and the most common bacteria used in clonings are E. coli. These are extrachromosomal and very easy to purify out of bacteria. And there are different elements that compose a plasmid. There is an origin of replication that bacteria uses to replicate this plasmid in multiple copies. There is always a resistant gene that provides resistance to a particular antibiotic whenever the bacteria acquires this plasmid. There is also a multi-cloning site, which is a hub for multiple restriction sites that are recognized by multiple different um, restriction enzymes. And here we use this to insert a recombinant DNA molecule. Depending on the, um, the nature of the molecule, the purpose of the experiment, we can incorporate a cDNA if what we want to do is express a recombinant protein or for a, a particular gene, or we can express a small hairpin RNA that will result in a double-strand RNA for inhibition purposes. 
In this slide, this is an, there is an example of a well-known expression vector um, to express recombinant protein in mammalian cells. This is uh, the one called PCDNA. And you can insert here whatever product you want to express in mammalian cells. You will insert it and clone it into bacteria, isolate it from bacteria, and then transform this into mammalian cells. Actually, this is what we do in the last step, the DNA cloning procedure, which consists in taking this plasmid or expression vector and a DNA fragment of interest we, that we want to express. We have to cut it with restriction enzymes, and the, the restriction enzymes need to be the same in both elements. So you cut the both plasmid and DNA fragment with the same restriction enzymes. Then we put together the pieces and we re-ligate the digested vector and the digested DNA fragment. Then after that we will transform bacteria with the resulting plasmids. And then we will plate those bacteria into an agar plate complemented with a resistant antibiotic. Depending on the resistant gene that there was in the plasmid that you use, you will use a different antibiotic. And all the bacteria that get this circular molecule will be able to grow in this plate. Then, after bacterial growth, bacterial clone amplification, and DNA purification, we will have a sample of purified expression vector that will be ready for transfection to mammalian cells. So this is all about DNA recombinant technology and here I leave you with a problem that we will see in class in which you can apply what we've seen in this video.